Thanks for staying with us on News Hub. Now we're switching gears to talk about the issue of corruption in the country as well as terrorism. Uh, we want to see how the anti graft war has fared so far, especially since 1999, and also beam our searchlight on the counterterrorism efforts of administrations leading up to the present one and how we need to move uh, further in all of these efforts. This morning, we're discussing when immunity ends for public office holders uh, when they've not been able to really deliver on the uh, mandate or they have issues to answer with regards to anti-graft or counter-terrorism. This morning, joining us uh, virtually is a scholar and public affairs analyst, Kletus Obon. Thank you indeed for joining us on News Hub today. Thanks for having me Silver bed on this every day. All right, it's always our pleasure. Well, really, let's talk about your view of the fight against corruption in the country. It was made, uh, it, it, there was a new song that came with it when pres former President uh, Muhammad Buhari was in power. But then uh, it's been a song that many politicians may not really want to sing, but which many civil society organizations and Nigerians generally want them to. Tell us what you think. Well, uh, the corruption in our land, in Nigeria, has uh, uh, been identified as early as the days of Chinua Achebe, the trouble with Nigeria, in which he said the problem with Nigeria is squarely corruption. By today, I am very confident that the creation of anti graft agency under the uh, uh, Alicia Gwabasanjo administration in 1999 with the EFCC, whose nomenclature itself has become a contradiction by way of uh, trying to promote anti grad in names itself, or the name was given as Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Is it promotion or anti? That alone also you could ask yourself what is in the name. But here we are beginning to get involved in what a name means on the African continent and the African languages. But having said that, the graft agency, when it took off under Ribadu, now the National Security Advisor, was quite uh, something that was dreadful. And the mention of EFCC before public officers used to be a, a, a nightmare. But today, it is like a normal song, a lullaby that sends people to sleep. A mere threat which also enriches those who are charged with the responsibility of taking corruption out of our system. And when corruption is being defined as the stealing of money, I think again that it is a misplaced definition and an anomaly and it is anomalous. How? You cannot uh, be fighting corruption and at the same time becoming uh, dramatic about it. The recent case of EFCC versus Yaya Bello, the recent allegations by Dauda of, of Zamfara State against his predecessor, Matawale, who is now the Minister of State of Defense, at a point where insecurity is uh, feasting on the Northeast, then you are clearly going to get a situation in which we must have a total rejig of the system and change a focus on how EFCC operates, because the media trial is becoming bizarre and it's becoming an embarrassment. A situation especially in which there was shooting in As uh, Asoko Road District, a residential area that houses diplomats. The story and the image of Nigeria under that circumstance is clearly not good enough for us. And I think that somebody somewhere, especially the presidency, must intervene and caution the operatives of these agencies to act within the law. What happened last uh, 72 hours last week in Aso, Asokoro was clearly beyond professional conduct and should be condemned. And the EFCC must address itself and apologize to Nigerians, especially Belo, because it appears to me now that it is now becoming a vendetta of a personal dimension. Because if it is about the missing monies of Kogi people, it is the Kogi people that should even be screaming. It is, not the, it is the media that should be losing around to know what EFCC is doing, not FCC to offer itself as dramatist and making the entire country go into a, a swirl wing on account of watching a melodrama in Asokoro last week. So for me, corruption and anti-corruption agencies are, will continue to fester 
at a point you find former governors going to prison. Please interject you from, because we need to we need uh, to move on to from John Yame, other issues. To, yes, uh, I'm, I'm to sorry to interject, Mr. To Mr. Others and all that. You yes. Find them doing that. All right, I, I'm sorry to interject you. We need to move on to uh, other issues. There are quite a, a lot that we need to unpack in the course of uh, this conversation. Uh, anyway, the focus is on the immunity and how uh, it's affected the old uh, anti-corruption fight. Uh, I, I know for a fact that um, what we have been told o over time is that the immunity clause was actually put there in the Constitution to be able to, uh, you know, um, have, I mean, allow politicians or political office holders, you know, the chief executive, the governor, the president, you know, concentrate on their work, you know, just to avoid uh, distractions. So the, the, the whole idea is to protect the office and not necessarily the man, just so that he can have time to deliver. So at what point the, 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 the immunity clause become, become a problem for us? Because if the intention was to, you know, put it there to avoid distractions, how come it's today a problem? The intentment, when you are reading a law, I'm a lawmaker, I have been a lawmaker, and of course you don't even need to be a lawmaker or a lawyer to know that the intentment of that clause, like you rightly put it, was to stop people from, oh, the, yesterday the governor slapped me and he's in court. The next minute, this road is constructed, he didn't pay me concentration, sue the governor and the state, and he's in court. That will take away focus from the man and the strength. So that was the intentment. The spirit of the law is to give the executive officer as president or governor, deputy governor or vice president, you give him time to concentrate on giving service delivery of governance. So that clause does not in any way immune him after service once he loses the immunity. You can see the case of Obiano. Look, I've named about three former governors who have gone to jail in this country. We've seen executive officers who after leaving office and losing immunity, Parliamentarians are not immune. So a senator who misconducts himself can go to prison. We've seen that in the US, we've seen that here in Nigeria. And therefore, when a governor is sitting in office, they must be separated from him. Criminal actions that are actionable without immunity, which can then be taken up immediately he leaves office. Once he uses that immunity, he can. And that is why people like Yaya Bello are on trial. Before he even left office, they were compiling and dealing with things that they imagined were not supposed to be done. But now that he's left office, they now say we should investigate him. What we are saying is not that he should be excluded. We are saying it should be done within the ambit of the law. The man should be made to clear himself because our laws, our statutes, precludes. Our jurisprudence says a man is, first of all, innocent until proven guilty by a court of competent jurisdiction. Until that pronouncement is made by a court, no man living. So it is wrong for you to start calling a man a criminal just because he's having allegations or investigations. In any case, you went to court. If you went to court to say this man, we found him guilty, that means you have concluded your investigation. So the court take over from there. The issue of arrest or no arrest and declaring wanted becomes superfluous, becomes okay. dramatic. It All is right. no longer a professional thing to do. All right, Mr. Clinton. Because you have already had counts against him in court. That means you have finished investigation. If you have not finished investigation, conclude your investigation and take him to court. All right, thank you so much. Uh, for those wondering, the section of the Federal uh, Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, but uh, Section 308 provides immunity from trial for the president, vice president, governor, and deputy governor during the subsistence. Uh, tenure of office. It means that once they're in still in office, whatever they do, they will still pay eventually, but it will be after the tenure uh, in, of, of their office, so to speak. Uh, when you're talking about uh, immunity in this place, it means that they're exempted from any liability, duty, liability or service of process. So whether it's electoral, whether it's moral, whether it's financial, whether it has to do with terrorism, you have to wait until after. But this only covers this category of uh, public officers in the country. It's not extended to ministers. And as we speak, if you look around you, there are some issues being raised, uh, even on people within the National Assembly and others who must, who must have lost their immunity at this point in time, but still are answering questions uh, at the moment. Do you think, indeed, that this immunity clause is working in our own climb? Or you're looking at when electoral... Uh, processes can be amended. It should be further looked into. 
No, no, uh, let me say this to you. It is not, it is the abuse of it that should rather be looked into. Our laws are near perfect. In any case, there are no perfect laws. So if you are discussing the issue of immunity as becoming an impediment, imagining that 36 governors, excluding the FCT minister who is not immune, the 36 governors who are immune cannot be the owners and the ones that are carrying out criminal acts. Those who have even vicarious responsibility of participating, like you will say, accessories before the act and accessories after the act, are still liable to answer to the courts and to our laws. So it is not enough to just say the governors. The governors have only four years, at the very best, eight years. Eight years is not 80 years. It is not 80 centuries. It is just eight years if the man goes for a second tenure. Therefore, they must be allowed to. What we should be seeking and which is what I also will advocate for, is that criminal immunity should not be granted such officers. Mm. The four officers prescribed are called criminal immunity. A, a man who is known to be funding terrorism should not be allowed in office. Again, because our parliament in the state level, the subnationals, have become near parliament, parliaments of foul, as Jonathan Swift would describe them, it has become difficult for you to take away such person because anybody under our laws who is suspected to do anything that infringes on the constitution as governor or president can be removed by the parliament but because the parliaments have been pulled and stripped of their potency we are now seeking extra methods by which we can deal with such public officers otherwise a man who is seen to be sponsoring terrorism banditry or who is keeping or housing such people should ordinarily on his own either resign or should be taken out of office because terrorism and insurgency sponsored by state actor can as well be a, a way of seeking to change government by violence, which is against our constitution. Such immunity cannot apply to such persons. They must have to lose that level of immunity. But until the laws are amended, what we have is what we have, which is that even if the man is caught with a gun, shooting somebody in front of his office, by our laws, he cannot be arrested. That kind of criminal exclusion should, is the clause that I think should be amended in our constitution, such that such brazen acts, prima facie cases of that nature, prima facie cases of that nature, should not be enjoying immunity under our laws. All right. Um, I know that, um, again, to put it very clearly, the immunity clause uh, hasn't stopped any of the security agencies from investigating the governor, the deputy governor, the president, or the, or the vice president. Right. You, you are allowed right. to investigate, but you cannot prosecute because of the immunity. Now, the, the question is, do we have institutions that are bold enough to go ahead and investigate the president, the vice president, the governor, the deputy governor? Do we have such institutions in Nigeria? Can, can the IG of police be bold enough to go ahead and just go ahead full hog, I mean, full throttle to challenge or to investigate the president, for example? Only recent, all those who have been tried, all those who have been tried. For instance, if you remember, when the Bakasi debacle emanated, emerged, in which the Green Tree Agreement was signed before ratification by the National Assembly after the ceding of Bakasi Peninsula, I was one of those who called that President Obasanjo, as he was sitting, as he then was in office, should be prosecuted for treason because going to go and accept and enter into international treaties without the ratification of the National Assembly was clearly treasonable, in which lands and people were ceded to other areas, a situation, a place in which we had no business whatsoever. So if you have such matters, it is either by impeachment or by resignation or by prosecution after he has lost immunity. That did not happen. That's a prime facie case. Till today, the Green Tree Agreement has not been ratified by Nigerian Parliament as enshrined in our constitution. Now that is one level of infringement in which Nigeria lost land and today the Bakasi people are stateless. The Bakasi people are refugees in their own country. And today it is promises even the so-called Green Tree Agreement has in it clauses that protect the people. 22 articles under the, under the United Nations uh, uh, rights of indigenous people, under the rights of indigenous people, 22 articles under that treaty have not been respected because a referendum ought to have been conducted. It was never done. 
Even when the Constable government offered to do it, it was never done. So this was a clear case. Now, the second thing you must have to come through about the fact of uh, immunity clause and the abuse of the immunity clause is that governors and deputy governors can be investigated, yes. But what do you do with the investigation? Why, are, why is EFCC, um, the um, uh, uh, fraud, uh, uh, NFIU, why are the CIDs, why is the DSS, why is NIA, why is DIA not able to investigate people, especially over the territorial integrity of Nigeria, okay. to protect it? Why will people wow. sitting in government not be investigated and kept? Does it in any way deter them? It All is. Right. If you ask me, I can tell you today on that short that our security time, agencies Mr. have sufficient Curtis. evidence in which some of these people ought to be in prison till tomorrow. But the investigations are never used. They are never utilized to prosecute. So what you should be asking is, do we have people and civil society groups that can insist on prosecution? We are dealing with uh, prepared uh, 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 agreements about, oh, why is price of petrol going up? Nobody is talking about why is this still insurgency? Okay. Why right. is it that some areas have not been touched as well? So these are the investigations that have been done, but never prosecuted. Very important. People are not prosecuted even when those investigations are done. Thank you so much, Kletus. We're yet to really touch properly on the counterterrorism part of it because uh, in all of this, no matter what the law says, one thing that we know that is for sure, whether morally or as under the law, is that everybody wants to feel safe and secure uh, within uh, especially the provision of the Constitution, which really protects every citizen, uh, which should now be the prerogative of the president and those in power to ensure that they harness everything within the uh, law to protect the lives and property of people. When this is questioned, they, to, due to anti-terrorism, people, due to counter-terrorism efforts, which are not being productive, Nigerians will start to ask how much is being paid and who are those uh, officers, past especially, who have been fingered to be responsible for collaborating, aiding and abetting terrorism in the country and why they've not been brought to book. We'll talk about that someday soon. We do hope to invite you to join us on the show. All right, it's still News Hub. So many things to talk about Nigeria and how great this country is and how we just have to fix some things that seem so little but so big so that we can live our dreams as a nation. Let's take a very short break. When we come back, we want to talk about uh, I mean, it would be like the, the icing on the cake for the uh, 2024 governorship election. We want to talk about the poll, the players, and the people after this time. Do stay with us.